Hello friends and greetings for today. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 1 talking about the fundamentals of testing and we are continuing with our last segment that is Essential Skills and Good Practices 1.5 of this chapter. And this is the part 2 of this particular segment. Uh, we will be covering the next two parts that is whole team approach and the degree of independence of testing. So when it comes to whole team approach, of course, it's the very common understanding that today the era is all about agile and today we are not working separate from each other or very, very differently located or separated in the sense like one team is sitting in one particular location and one team is sitting in another location. That is no distributed teams we are looking forward to. Indeed, no matter what kind of methodology you are following, you are looking forward to have as much as co-location as possible so that the team is synchronized and working very closely with other stakeholders in order to reduce the communication gaps at the same time have a better understanding and collaboration among the stakeholders and that's where the whole team approach comes into consideration as we talk about whole team approach there are several characteristics which one that is a tester should take into consideration to collaborate and coordinate with different stakeholders in order to understand that how exactly they should interact with them, communicate with them, and what kind of dependencies and support will they really have among the other stakeholders. So in order to understand more about this, here is our, some of the information from the syllabus which talks about what are we considering as whole team approach. So when we talk about the whole team approach, one of the important skills for a tester is the ability to work effectively in a team context and to contribute positively to the team goals. The whole team approach, a practice coming from extreme programming, builds upon the skills, which clearly talks about something very important that what is the you know, origin of this particular approach that is whole team approach. Of course, one of the approaches of Agile is also called as extreme programming uh, compared to that of Scrum and Kanban. We do have another approach called as stream programming. And this extreme programming initially introduced the whole team approach. That means everyone, be it architect, developer, and tester, they should all work together. And that helps us to have a better communication and indeed good collaboration among the team members. A lot of clarifications, a lot of doubts are sorted when the team are working together. Also to add further, we are talking about in the whole team approach, any team member with the necessary knowledge and skills can perform any task and everyone is responsible for quality. Now that's another important thing which comes together with the whole team approach that quality is not just testing team responsibility. It is everyone's responsibility to uh, define quality in the product because it's not just one person working separately like a testing team and defining and taking the ownership on that. Today, every single stakeholder in the entire team is responsible for defining quality in the product. And at the same time, these the members are so defined or so hired put together in terms of team dynamics, that means the team member can do any task which is relevant to them, right? As far as they have the skills, as they mentioned that anyone can do that particular task. Mm -hmm. The very next point, what we have here is, of course, the team members share the same workspace, physical or virtual, as co-location facilitates communication and interaction. And that's what we were just talking about a moment ago. The whole team approach improves team dynamics, enhances communications and collaboration within the team, and creates synergy by allowing the various skill sets within the team to be leveraged for the benefits of the project. Now, as I mentioned, it's not like we just have all the members with similar set of skills. We do look forward to have cross-functional team members put together. And as they have different skill set, they can very well be leveraged for their skills to perform a certain activity within the project, right? So that certainly helps and minimizes our effort of depending outside the team and rather making use of internal skills itself. Also to add, we are talking about the next one that is testers work very closely with other team members to ensure that the desired quality levels are achieved. So here we don't have differences or gap between the two members. Thus it becomes very simple and easy to collaborate and understand or gain understanding about the aspects, which certainly brings back a lot of value. Also to add that this includes collaborating with business representatives also to help them create suitable acceptance tests and working with developers to agree on the test strategy 
and decide on the test automation approaches. So it's just that like when we are working very, very close to developers, it's just not limited to that, but also we work very closely with the business stakeholders to help them understand what our test cases. One way we do become agile, just like agile coach, we do become a testing coach or quality coaches to our team members and educate them about what exactly the test cases will be and how exactly the testing will be conducted and what is that we would be expecting in terms of uh, validating the functionality or features. So in that context, we do educate other stakeholders about testing and quality and how to define quality in the product. Thus, put together uh, as a whole team goal, we can certainly achieve a great quality right here. Also at the same time, testers can thus transfer testing knowledge to all the other team members and influence the development of the product. Depending on the context, the whole team approach may not always be appropriate. For instance, in some situations, such as safety critical, a huge level of test independence may be needed. Now here we are just trying to give you a quick example on it's not necessary that whole team approach is always helpful. Sometimes we do have a drawback of having a very close collaboration between developer and tester. The only drawback what we see here is that the degree of independence between the two teams is lost. Sometimes a tester starts thinking from a development perspective and may lose their psychology or the mindset what they need in order to find defects. So working closely with developers but maintaining that asset of your psychology is equally important. And when it comes to different critical products, it's very, very important that you should maintain that difference because here working closely may result into defect leakage. Okay, so working closely is very common to understand that however we collaborate and blend to solve our problems together, but sometimes we work so closely with the developers that we may, we may lose our sense and capability of finding defects as we start probably treating ourselves into the developer's shoes and start feeling that, you know, the process and the way they work and that could be a big drawback for us. Well, the next topic we are talking about is called as independent, independence of testing. And independence of testing is mainly to talk about what are the different degree of independence which can be experienced in different organization. Now, degree of independence is to just let you know that it's not necessary that testing always happens independently from the development team. That means sometimes it can be done by developers, sometimes it can be done by different developers, but within the development team, or sometimes it can be done by a separate testing team, what we practice today, or sometimes it can just be outsourced also. But depending on organization factors, the organization size and maturity levels, you can determine the different degree of independence. So let's have a look what the content is trying to share with us at this point of time. So we have, of course, independence of testing as the next topic we're talking about. A certain degree of independence makes the tester more effective at finding defects due to difference between the authors and the testers cognitive biases because of their different mindsets, different abilities and different portfolios, you certainly tend to find different defects than that of the developer. Right here, we have identified four different degrees of independence. Number one, work products can be tested by their author. That means no independent tester. A developer is the only person who has written the code and the same person is actually trying to test the code. The second degree of independence is by the author's peer from the same team, which means there is a slight difference in dependence between the person who created it and testing it, but they both may be from the same team that is development. For an example, if I'm writing a code as developer one, I would give it to developer two for unit testing, having a little independence there. When we talk about the degree number three, the degree number three talks about a test by testers from outside the author's team, but within the same organization, which simply means one thing, that what we are practicing today, development team is only responsible for development and the testing like integration and system testing is being conducted by separate team called as QA team. And the fourth one is highly independent, which means that the testers from outside the organization. And here we can take the example of those startup or small based, small scale organizations where Testing is completely outsourced to another third party organization because they may not be able to afford testers within their organization. So put together, we have identified four different degree of independence and that certainly gives us understanding that the more it is independent, the better it is to find defects. But 
is that like is there anything very best here or what is that an organization should actually follow so of course they have differences here that we do have benefits of high independence at the same time the drawbacks of high independence so let's quickly check it out that what are these benefits and drawbacks and understand more about it also to add before we move on there that is for most projects it is usually best to carry out testing with multiple levels of independence that means having a blend of multiple independence degree within an organization within a project would be helpful for an example developers performing component and component integration testing test team performing system and system integration testing and business representing uh, business representatives performing acceptance testing so in that context it will have a blend of everything put together that is all four degrees at the same time so let's talk about the benefits and drawbacks of having independent testing because not every good thing comes without a problem or without a drawback. So let's exactly see how these things can really be helpful and at what points these can become a challenge for us and how we can overcome those drawbacks. So the benefits are limited, of course, and includes independent testers are likely to recognize different kind of failures and detect uh, defects compared to developer because of their different background, technical perspective, and the biases of course a tester is someone different than the person who has written the code would certainly be capable of finding different defects than that of developers and will be more efficient in looking into the user perceptions on the second we do have another independent testers benefit that is they can verify challenge or disapprove assumptions made by stakeholders during the specification and implementation of the system assumptions are those where the requirements are unclear and uh, sometimes the business analyst also takes as a mixed assumption if in case they are not having complete information the technical team like design and development team will make certain assumptions to go with how to implement this requirement but again as far as you make an assumption you think this is the best for it but of course it may not be as far as you share your perception with someone else you may understand that your assumption was not up to the mark but not only that like not only to challenge or disapprove but even to verify or validate i need someone else that whether these assumptions are what expected here right the drawbacks on the other hand includes that independent testers may be isolated from the development team again considering the highest independent team so can be treated as a service provider vendor rather than a technical team as a part of the process so when you outsource certain services or certain activities to third party organization you may not treat them as a part of the process and because of that they may have lack of collaboration lack of understanding of the component and details because of security policies between the organizations and many other things also to talk about developers may lose the sense of responsibility for quality now it's very clear and understandable that a developer is not at all responsible for testing and being outsourced then everything will be done by other organization and here developers may not have any kind of understanding that how exactly quality can be defined into the organization into the project so in that context we do give one level to them that is unit testing and that's why this unit testing is given to developers that is to eliminate this drawback of independent testing and the third what we have here with us is independent testers may be seen as bottleneck or blamed for delays in release because it's very common to understand the one who is last in the queue will always have less time with them and said that certainly can become a crunch and would be blamed for all the delays so however this drawback cannot be eliminated all i would say but being prompt right from the beginning because somewhere someone is eating the time right somewhere someone is occupying the time that you don't get what time you need so testing always claims one thing that we did not get the stories on time we did not get the development code at the time when we are supposed to start testing and uh, that's where most of the time we get delays so instead of reflecting that when we have the delays with us rather in advance if you can start anticipating the delays you can always prevent this drawback okay so put together that's all what we had from this particular tutorial team uh, should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.